So I say, graders, hey, it's Mr. Brookcamp again. So now that you, we figured out that there's patterns in science, so we looked at like lithium and sodium and calcium and where they were all on the periodic table. So now we're going to apply that same concept to motion. And the study of motion is called physics. So we're, I'm just going to give you kind of a brief introduction to what happens in physics and see if we can find a similar pattern to what we saw when we looked at chemical reactions. So all I have here is just a simple cart and, and it can roll. And so there was a man by the name of Isaac Newton, one of the most famous uh, scientists that ever lived. And Isaac Newton came up with three laws of motion. And so we're going to kind of look at, at those laws today. And so the first law basically says that objects in motion are objects that are at rest stay at rest and objects that are in motion stay in motion. So if I've got this car here and I don't apply a force to it, it just remains at rest. Now, if I give it a push, okay, then I can make it accelerate. Now, it's not going to accelerate without a push. So now if I give it a little bit of push, I get a little bit of acceleration. Now acceleration just means that something is speeding up or slowing down. Okay, that's all that means. So don't, don't flip out about a big word. Acceleration just means something is speeding up or slowing down. So if I apply a little bit of force, I get a little bit of acceleration. If I apply a lot of force, I get a lot of acceleration. Okay, so that's the first pattern that we need to look at, is that if I apply a little bit of force, I get a little bit of acceleration. If I apply a lot of force, I get a lot of acceleration. Okay, so that's just me like grabbing it and pushing it. So the other thing that we can do is that we can let gravity do that. So I'm going to push, put this up here, and put it on the rack. And then I'm going to take this 20 gram mass and I'm going to put that on the end of the string like this. So what's going to happen is that gravity is going to be pulling down on this side. So then when I let go of it, we're going to create a force and we're going to make the cart hopefully accelerate. So when I let go of it, it begins to accelerate. So this is another situation where a force is being applied to a system to make it accelerate. So do this again, got it here, right? Got weight pulling down over here. I let go of it, boom, it begins to accelerate. So now we're gonna do that, but now we're gonna put a bigger mass on the end of it. So with a bigger mass, because of this rock that we're on, otherwise known as the Earth, we have a gravitational field, and that gravitational field allows things to fall. So when I let go of this one, I get a much bigger acceleration because there's more gravity pulling down on the end of the string, I get a bigger acceleration. Okay, so we've let, I've done a push, right? I've let gravity do it. So another option is that we're going to take a fan, okay? So all this does, okay? So this is just a fan, right? Kind of poof up the hair a little bit. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to watch what happens. So I'm going to turn it on. And oddly enough, the car begins to accelerate. So this is how jet engines work. So what's happening is that the air is being forced out this way, and it's exerting a force in the opposite direction to make the car go. Now, this is Newton's third law of motion. So the first law of motion says this thing is going to stay at rest until I apply a force. The second law says the more force that I apply, the more acceleration I get. The third law says that when something pushes in one direction, it pushes back in the opposite direction. So that's what's happening with the fan. So when I turn that on, the air is being pushed out of one side, and then by Newton's third law, it exerts a force in the opposite direction. So now we're going to kind of combine all of this together. 
So there's two speeds to the fan. That was on the low speed. So if a little bit of force is good, more force must be better. So I'm going to turn it up to high, okay? And then I'm going to let go of it. And I get an even bigger acceleration. So here's the idea. You can look at all three of Newton's laws in one situation. It remained at rest until I applied a force. The more force that I applied, the more acceleration that I got. When the fan exerted a force in one direction, the, for, the fan exerted a force on the cart in the opposite direction, and that's what made it move, which is how jet air or jet engines work on airplanes. Okay. Now, the other thing that you can do is that you can use energy. So here I've got a spring, okay, and I'm going to push that in, and it's going to stay compressed. Now, this is what we call potential energy. So this is energy that I store in the spring. So if I push this button down, that stored energy as potential makes it move. So I'm going to push this in. I'm going to put these two cards like this. And then I'm going to hit it like this. Now, you'll notice that as soon as I do that, the carts go in opposite directions. Oh, at this point you want, oh, let's look at a pattern. Yeah, right, Mr. Burkamp, there's a pattern here. So the carts remained at rest, okay, until an outside force acts upon them, which is the spring, right? And if I compress the spring just a little bit, I apply just a little bit of force, I get a little bit of acceleration. But if I compress it even more, I get even more of a force, and I get a bigger acceleration. And again, here's Newton's third law. Ah, oh, right. For every force, there is an equal and opposite force. So this cart pushes in this direction, and then it has to push on the other cart in the opposite direction. That's why they go in opposite directions. Ah, okay, cool. Now, another option. So here I've got a balloon, okay? And it's just on a cart, right? So now if I put my hand here, you notice that nothing happens. Oh, okay, right, Mr. Burkham. Oh, I see the pattern. It's Newton's first law of motion. Right. It's going to remain at rest until an outside force acts upon it. Good idea. Okay. Now, I'm going to do something different, though. So I'm going to take this blanket, and I'm going to rub the balloon, and this should create static electricity. Now when I put my hand there, Notice that my hand isn't touching the balloon, but I can make the balloon move. So in this situation, okay, I'm making the balloon move, and I know it's not magic, and I wish I could say I was like a Jedi warrior and this is some kind of Jedi mind trick, but it's not. So what I've done is that I've charged the balloon with static electricity. And so what happens is that, but unfortunately it fades out pretty quick, so let me charge it up again. So what happens is there's little bits of matter that are charged particles called electrons. And so when I put my hand here, my, those charged particles become attracted to my hand, and that's what makes the balloon move. So now I'm going to take another balloon, and I'm going to charge it. Okay, so I'm going to rub it on the balloon. Okay. Now... When I bring this balloon near it, these balloons don't like each other. But again, here's Newton's laws of motion in play. This balloon is at rest. I bring this balloon near it. Yeah, hold on, I'm going to charge again. Oh. Hold on. So the balloons aren't touching, but it's Newton's three laws of motion. So even if I push this balloon near it, it's going to stop it, and then I can make it go in the opposite direction. So here's what's cool about this. Everything else, we actually had to touch the cart. We had to tie it to a string. We had to push it. We had to put the fan on. 
The cool thing about static electricity is that it exerts a force, but it doesn't have to be in direct contact. So what that means is that we can have situations where we would have forces, but not something in direct contact. So here's the pattern, kids. First law of motion. Object at rest, remain at rest until an outside force acts upon them. If I apply a little bit of force, I get a little bit of acceleration. This is Newton's second law. If I apply a lot of force, I get a lot of acceleration. And when things exert forces, if one exerts a force on one, the other one has to exert a force in the opposite direction. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video, and hopefully you learned a little bit about science.